Welcome to the show, guys. Happy Monday. We are talking about five wide receivers I love for fantasy football 2022, the very early list. But it's never too early to talk about fantasy football, particularly wide receivers going into this season. So I'm going to dive into five wide receivers I love that you should consider targeting for 2022. Excited to dive into this list with you guys and for you guys, all right? Before we get into this, guys, the show is brought to you by pristineauction.com. Head on over there right now, create an account, you get $10 off any auction of your choice, and you're entered to win in some, you know, entered to win some amazing draws, including a signed Travis Kelsey frame jersey. I've got helmets, I've got a signed Stefan Diggs football. Amazing giveaways this month, guys. PristineAuction.com. Use code SWAGLINE. It's free to create an account. Go create an account. You're automatically entered. Winners will be announced on my Instagram at fantasy football counselor in my story mode. You will be tagged. If you guys are entered. So pristineauction.com, code SWAGLINE, amazing giveaways. They've been giving away some great stuff, some great winners. Pristineauction.com, code SWAGLINE. Let's dive into this show, guys. Five wide receivers that I love for 2022. All right, guys, welcome to the show. Let's rip into this list. If you're new to the channel, make sure you guys click subscribe right here below. If you're on YouTube, subscribe, thumbs up, helps the channel. I'm telling you guys, this is winning advice to help you guys win. This is not cookie cutter advice. It's not consensus. And that's the big problem I have. If you're on the channel, one thing I emphasize is that a lot of the mainstream, they just give you copy and paste advice. Last year's top finishers say draft them again in that order. So that's not how I work here, guys. I give you practical advice of players that can actually break out, can actually do well, and I actually want you guys to win your league. So make sure you guys do click the subscribe button and get the 16-round draft solution below. If you don't know what it is, go to 16, uh, just Google the fantasy football council.com or Google 16 round draft solution. Watch the video and dive in. This will help you guys win your league. Draft kits are dead. This is the solution. Get it below. Okay, guys, if you're here on YouTube. All right, number one here, one wide receiver I absolutely love. Currently sitting fourth on the consensus rankings, a guy that was ranked 50th. Oh, no, I don't think he was 50th. He was a little bit lower. He was, I think he was in the 30s in regards to rankings on the Kinship. The guy I was thinking about, the other guys I'm thinking about were ranked over 50. Uh, but this guy is Jamar Chase. Okay. Now I absolutely love him. I know it's pretty obvious at this point. But last year I was recommending him as a sleeper, my 16 round draft solution. While everyone is drafting big, well known names. I give you names of guys that could potentially break out. So Jamar Chase, I love him so much. And so many people are on Cooper Cup being the top wide receiver this upcoming year. Why? Because he finished on top last year. This is a guy who's recommending in third or fourth round last year my 60-round draft solution. Cooper Cup, believe it or not, guys, was ranked behind Robert Woods on the consensus rankings and in the magazines. Everyone lied to you. And I was telling you guys, Cooper Cup is better than Robert Woods. People are like, no, no, Robert Woods ahead of him. And everybody had... Robert Woods ahead of Cooper Cup. I'm like, that's ludicrous. Cooper Cup is the one. Sure enough, now he breaks out and everybody's riding him um, all the way to, you know, to the sunset. It's just crazy how much they love Cooper Cup now because he had a good year. The problem with that is the pinnacle year, decline coming. And again, subscribe. We talk about players that are declined. We talk about sleepers. We talk about breakouts. We talk about regressions. We talk about everything here. So make sure you guys are subscribed. But going off on a tangent with Cooper Cup, everyone loves him. I actually think Jamar Chase, the guy, my first guy I love here, will finish ahead of Cooper Cup. Now, what really separates these two guys, actually what really significantly separates them, is the targets. Now, here's the, here's the amazing thing. Now, Cooper Cup had this pinnacle year. He's naturally going to decline. Jamar Chase had a really good year, finished fifth amongst wide receivers in PPR, and he didn't even scratch surface. Look, if you look at the target count, 128 targets with Jamar Chase compared to Cooper Cup with 191 targets. That is what really separates them is that massive gap of the actual targets and in regards to where they finished amongst wide receivers, four spot difference. So that tells me a couple things. It tells me that Cooper Cup had this pinnacle year and he's going to decline 100%. I mean, he's definitely going to decline. And Jamar Chase hasn't scratched his ceiling. He only had 128, 128 targets, 81 receptions, 1,455 yards, and 13 touchdowns. Now, the touchdowns, I think he's pretty good there. That could go up or down. But I definitely think that the targets are going to go up, which means receptions are going to go up, which means the overall fantasy points are going to go up. So I love Jamar Chase, young, dynamic playmaker. He catch, he makes difficult catches. This guy comes down with the ball, gets the yards after catch, gets it done, and that rapport with Joe Burrow continues to build. So I'm super excited about Jamar Chase. And I'm not really a guy to draft a wide receiver in the first round, but man, if I miss out on Jonathan Taylor, Derrick Henry, and Najee Harris in the first round, I'm tempted to go Jamar Chase in the first round. Again, I don't want to stray away from my robust RB strategy, but he's tempting to take in that first round. But I want to let you guys know, when we are talking wide receivers and we're talking 
fantasy football draft strategy here, you got to understand that there's a ton of depth at wide receiver, which I'm going to dive in and show you guys right now. Now, this is not a sleeper video. This is just wide receivers I love going into the season, all right? Number two here, another wide receiver I love is Amonra St. Brown. Amonra St. Brown finished 21st amongst wide receivers last year, which isn't bad considering this guy was ranked 60th or 70th even amongst wide receivers. Everyone was sleeping on him. He was going undrafted. The reason I loved him and suggested him in my 16-round draft solution was simple. There was no wide receiver there on the Detroit uh, Detroit Lions, and you saw Jared Goff make wide receivers really good when he was with uh, with the Rams. So you saw the opportunity there for Amon St. Brown to really flourish because there was nobody else there. There was no true wide receiver one. Then near the end of the season, Amon St. Brown really started to step it up. Now, the thing about him is, again, lower targets, 119. I want to see that go up, even though he was the number one target getter on the Lions. I definitely want to see that go up. Five touchdowns, I'm definitely going to see that go up. 912 receiving yards, that's going to come up. He's coming into his own. He did play all the games, knock on wood, he was healthy. You got him for pretty much free. He was stashed on your bench if he got 16 rounds. I love him on our St. Brown. I think the talent is there. I think the youth is there. I think the upside is there. Lions got to make some improvements on the O-line. Goff needs more time to throw. They need... Probably some more weapons there to distract the defenses. If they key in on Amonra, that could be a problem. But I still think that he is the guy there. He's going to get better. Second year is going to be a good one for him. I love him. I love the upside. And I think the value is going to be there as well. Sitting 27th on the consensus rankings, he's a wide receiver one on his team as of right now, pre-NFL draft, right? We're going to have to see what happens at the NFL draft. And then the depth charts layout. That's when I released my first version of 16 rounds. So you got to understand, guys, that Amonra St. Brown, has the upside. I still think he's going to be good value. Love him, okay? Uh, coming to number three, Devontae Smith. I keep talking about him. A lot of people are going to be sleeping on him. Finished, tw- what did he finish last year? Finished 30th amongst wide receivers. Currently sitting 29th on the consensus rankings amongst wide receivers in PPR. Devontae Smith continues to build that rapport with Jalen Hurts. I think Jalen Hurts and him return. Another problem with this guy, and that shows how much ceiling is left, 104 targets. I think the target count goes up. He gets comfortable. He gets into his own. And again, the Eagles spent a high draft capital on him. Similarly, the same thing the Bengals did. High draft capital in their wide receivers like Jabari Chase. These guys are young. They're talented. And it was a very good wide receiver class that came in in regards to rookies. So Devontae Smith's a guy that is just really tempting to grab and make sure I try to roster him because I do see the talent. I do see the upside. And 104 targets, 916 yards, and five touchdowns. That 916 yards, that can definitely go up. And I'm super excited for Devontae Smith going into the season. And I think, again, the value is going to be there, saying 29th amongst wide receivers. And this is what I mean. I mean, you can get yourself and stack Amonra and Devontae Smith later. And there's other wide receiver sleepers, which we'll talk about. That's why you got to subscribe. We'll do a sleeper episode. There'll be tons of sleeper episodes. Um, you're going to get that value at wide receiver. And these guys could really flourish and be top 10 wide receivers. That's how much upside is there. But the Eagles, again, have to make some improvements. Devontae Smith's got to get the ball more, but I definitely love the upside. Okay, so Devontae Smith's another guy I love. Coming in at number four here, another guy I absolutely love is Deontay Johnson. The talent is there. The upside is there. The ability is there. The target count's there. There's only one knock to him this upcoming 2022 fantasy football season, and that is the quarterback. As if, you know, if the season was going to start today, Mesa Rudolph is slated as the starter. That could be a huge issue for Deontay Johnson if he actually ends up being the starter going into the season. But I love Deontay Johnson. There is no competition there. Chase Claypool has proven that he's good, but he's not the guy. When you're looking at the guy that's getting the volume, the guy that's getting the receptions, the guy that's running the best routes, you know, he's running everything. And he and he comes down with the ball. It's Deontay Johnson. He finished with eight touchdowns last year, 1,161 yards, and 169 targets with 107 receptions. That's really good. Now, the problem, again, with Deontay is not so much Deontay, but the quarterback throwing to him. A lot of uncertainty at the time of this recording, but I definitely do love Deontay Johnson this year. I still think there's a ton of upside. The talent is there. But again, with Big Ben being out, you know, I do have some question marks for sure. But in regards to talent, in regards to the guy who's set on the depth chart to be the one as the time of this recording, I absolutely love Deontay Johnson, and I will not stop lo- loving Deontay Johnson. So in regards to where he's sitting, he's sitting outside the top 10 on the Kinshipsis, the consensus rankings right now, sitting around 12th. This was a guy I was telling you to draft last year, and I was telling you guys, draft him, draft him. I got him in around the fourth round. Draft him. He's going to be a wide receiver one, but the mainstream was sleeping on him, right? Finished 12th. Uh, sorry, finished eighth amongst wide receivers last year. So definitely a good return on investment last year. 
and I, I don't can you know I don't see him slowing down this season at all. It all depends. It's predicated on who's throwing the ball, how much volume he's going to get. That's the only knock. But I love Deontay Johnson this year. Coming to number five, Adam Thielen. Now I know he's not a sexy pick, but here's the thing: people are going to spend a first round pick on Justin Jefferson. Okay, where Adam Thielen is the one on the team. I know you're crazy. No, Justin Jefferson is the one. Yeah, maybe. But here's the thing: Adam Thielen at the beginning of the season was the guy. Jefferson eventually took over. But the problem is Adam Thielen got hurt near the end of the season. And you can say, well, Joe, he's injured. He's not the guy. But still, this could be like a Cooper Cup, Robert Wood situation. You're saying, well, Joe, that's not possible. Justin Jefferson's so young. He's so good. I get it. But Adam Thielen had 95 targets compared to Jefferson's 167. But just Adam Thielen only played 13 games to, to Jefferson's 17. That's a four-game difference. And Jefferson was more of a PPR guy. Thielen's more of a touchdown guy. Now, I'm not necessarily saying that Thielen's going to beat Jefferson in fantasy points, but what I'm saying is the value is immense. He's sitting 31st on the consensus rankings, whereas Jefferson's like a top five. I can get Thielen later and theoretically get almost a wide receiver one for a value. I love the value. I love the talent still. He got hurt again, but he's still going to be a touchdown machine, and I still think he is the one on that team. And I don't care. I'm not spending a first-round pick on Justin Jefferson. I'm just not going to do it. So I get Adam Thielen later. I get him for value. I can stack him with Devontae Smith. I can stack him with Amon or St. Brown. And I've got my wide receiver core as a solid base. Now, are they a Debo Samuel, Devontae Adams, Cooper Cup? No. But here's the thing. What goes up must come down. We saw it. Michael Thomas, go back to 2019, had a pinnacle year. Everyone drafted him round one. What happened? He fell off. It just happens like that, guys. If you finish on top, you're not necessarily going to finish on top the year after, okay? The only guy that really did have really good consecutive seasons throughout the years was Antonio Brown, but he was an absolute anomaly. When it comes to wide receivers, there's a lot of volatility, and you can get value later. I don't invest early on a wide receiver. I just don't. I load on the most scarce position, which is running back, and then I stack wide receiver ones later, and there's a ton. Devontae Smith, Amon St. Brown, Deontay Johnson, Adam Thielen. Like, all these guys could be wide receiver ones on their team, and you're getting them for great value. And there's a ton of sleepers, a ton of breakouts. Rookies are going to come in. There's going to be some value rookies as well that are going to break out as well. So what I'm trying to tell you is this. You can wait on wide receiver, and what I love about wide receivers isn't necessarily the wide receiver. Yeah, I love Devontae Adams, but what I love is the wide receiver based on the value that I get him. Okay, so if I can get him for value, that's great. I'm not going to overpay. Do I love Cooper Cup? Yeah, I loved him last year. I had him in the fourth round. I got him. People drafted Robert Woods. Loved him. I don't love him anymore. He was last year's goods, right? I'm moving on to the next best thing. Who's going to emerge and step up the depth chart? A lot of people had Brandon Ayuk. I had a Debo Samuel last year. Everyone did. The mainstream did. I said Debo Samuel. He was like an eighth, ninth round pick. He finished, what, third amongst wide receivers, right? So a lot of people are going to love Debo Samuel, but is he going to get the rushing touchdowns that he had last year? I, I really doubt it. Again, I'm not going to dive into Debo Samuel and all that stuff right now, and people that are going to decline and stuff like that. What I'm focused on is the five wide receivers I love right now and why I love them. Again, the value is there, the talent is there, the opportunity is there, and the depth chart height. They're good on the depth chart is there as well. Okay, guys? Make sure you guys are subscribed. Thumbs up, guys. We're ramping up for Fantasy Football 2022. It never stops here on the number one fantasy football podcast. Subscribe. Thumbs up. Let me know in the comments below. Who do you love for Fantasy Football 2022 at the wide receiver position? If you're watching on YouTube, Leave a comment below. Get that 16-round draft solution and subscribe if you're not. Thanks for being here, guys. I'm out.